Okay, so we have talked about Morph and how cool Morph is. Although it's not such anything cool, but uh, we will definitely do something about that here very shortly. Um, we've talked about the knob and basically, as you remember, uh, if you set this to A and come up with an entire patch and then set it to B and come up with an entire patch, you can interpolate, which is to say, have all of the independent uh, parameters move from the setting of A to the setting of B independently as you turn this knob, which is really astoundingly cool, but <laughs> it's even cooler if we come over here to this uh, functional thing here, the button over here in the uh, grid area called Morph. Let's press it, shall we? Okay. Okay, so here's where we have a list of really boring looking functions that are super helpful, things that you don't know. When we talked about the Morph, turning the knob, Obviously, there were certain things that you cannot do. You can reset all the knobs. You can reset all the sliders so they're completely different in the second patch. So we have this. And then you can you know, go in and change whatever you wanted settings. Uh, what you can't do, of course, is change like the filter routing or the LFO shape or some of these other buttons that... Uh, if you change them while you're just using the morph knob on A or B, they, they stay changed. So you're like, oh, that's a thing I can't do. Fair. However, there are some ways in the morph setting that you can supersede that. Uh, and it's one and two, edit A and edit B allows you to go into a patch that already has a setting and change certain functions. I'm going to show you two of them. For example, we have a sound here, and I have uh, on patch A, uh, VCO1 is going to the Steiner filter. And then if we go to B, you'll notice we're still, even though it's a different waveform, it's still going to the Steiner filter. It has a different setting, you know, and obviously we could set the filter completely differently, but we are locked into it going specifically to the Steiner filter. But uh, let us do something here. Let's hit two and go to edit B. And now we're in edit B. And in edit B, we can do this. Come up with a totally different sound. And then it works. So if we back out and go back to mods, let's go to A. And now let's move to B. Aha, did you, oh, you probably can't see because we don't have a camera on it that really shows it, but this light changed from A to B. Now, I don't know <laughs> what's happening there because it makes sense to me from a digital standpoint, like as we move like setting on A, the filter, you know, cut off is set here and on B it's set here. And so the sweep between A and B is that parameter changing, from, the cutoff parameter changing from one setting to another setting. I don't know what's happening when you have it actually morphing from one entire filter to the other filter. And there's, a, you look at the light, there's a point where both lights are on. Uh, 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 okay. And this is a, a sound that has, incorporates both filter sounds. Maybe it is just crossfading. I don't know. The synthesizer is so complicated. It's amazing. And although we haven't talked about it yet, if you had uh, 
like the filters panned, we'd be like cross fading. We'd be fading from left to right with this thing. It, it, it's just so cool. <laughs> So that's a thing you could change. Uh, also, let's say uh, that we had a really obnoxious, uh, here, let's just do it. Let's go into mods. Um, we have, um, here, I'm gonna switch this to the tuning of oscillator one. And I'm gonna say LFO one is doing a thing here and LFO one is set to sample and hold. Now, if we did that same thing and move to B, although we do have a different filter, we still have the same sample and hold setting for LFO1. If we were to make use of this particular patch, uh, it would be um, that sample and hold because this is a switch and not a slider or not, but wait, of course, as you probably saw this coming, if we go into morph and we do edit B again, we can actually choose a different waveform there. And uh, so we go back to mods and we add that waveform, make sure it's happening. We're in B, right? Let's be in B. Okay, now let's go back to A. We have our <laughs> Steiner filter and a sample and hold in LFO one. But then as we morph to B, we have a uh, good old fashioned sine wave doing a crazy thing to the pitch. And again, like as you morph between these, you act, there's a point at which you can see both lights are on for the two different waves and you actually have a combination of those <laughs> two waveforms. So, wow, and that's a whole different patch right there. Now, what I wonder what would happen, oh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, those sounds are so different and they have different filter settings and they have different LFO waveforms. Uh, yeah, so basically these edit functions that we find in the morph section, edit A and edit B, uh, allow us to make some of the changes that uh, would be difficult to make when we were just using the knob and changing the sliders and knobs. There's a digital aspect that allows you to make some changes to some switched elements. Um, so that's cool. Edit A plus B is basically where you are setting uh, modulation choices in the patch panel and they have the same modulation amount and uh, polarity and that allows you to do that particular thing uh four is pick b which is really cool um like let's say we decided that this it's just not the ideal sound we want for this super awesome patch that we have. So let's do pick B, guess what happens? All of a sudden you see the presets light come on in red and it's asking you, okay, you're on five uh, A or one A, A1, five A1, as it said, I can just read it right there. Uh, that's the B that you have. Would you like a different B? Well, we could say, well, yeah, I'd like, uh, one uh, a whatever this is <laughs> uh and oh actually let's not do that let's do something more obvious what's just a standard magic sweep oh this one okay so and then we just go back to um mods or whatever and now our b is Here's our A. So you can go through, like if you want a different B patch, 
uh, you can just <laughs> choose any other sound that you've ever made or that anyone has ever put on this synthesizer and uh, use it as your B or your A. You can also, um, well, you can pick B, but then you can swap to A if that's what you want. Anyway, uh, so yeah, you can basically pick your B sound from any of your other sounds or any other sound that exists. So those are uh, really cool functions. And then on the other side, we have more functional outcomes like copy A to B, like say you really like your A, uh, you don't like your B and you want your A to be where your B is, uh, you can just copy your A straight to B and then get back to work creating what you really want on A, which is awesome. Current to A is really cool because it allows you to take whatever sound is currently happening and make that your A. So if you're a person who has been playing with your morph and you keep finding these really great patches in between two patches, like this one, which is plainly worth keeping, that's just awesome. Uh, if we did six right now, current to A, it would copy the place we're at parametrically, parametrically between A and B, and they would assign those parameters to A, <laughs> which this is the benefit of having a company that does really great software uh, designing the, 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 the digital aspects of your analog synthesizer. It allows complex outcomes like this. So basically, any patch you find in the midst of your morph spread, you can make into the patch, like A or B. As you can see, there's current to B too. So uh, yeah, they really, it, <laughs> morph, would, just the knob itself would have been enough. But no, they wanted to give you all of these possibilities and functionalities to allow you to really make use of this amazing functionality that they've designed. And then last, of course, we have swap A and B. Uh, I have personally made uh, patches thus far where B was a cooler sound than A, and I would have rather they were switched. And uh, you can certainly do that with eight. So uh, that is basically what's happening in your morph section. It's some administrative and functional uh, outcomes that can help you make the most of your morph knob, which is uh, pretty cool. And it becomes really cool, especially when we get over to using the Morphe and uh, that sort of thing. So yes, there we go. That is your morph functionality button on the Arturia Polybrute. I will also point out that there are some things that cannot change. And I don't know this for sure because I wasn't paying attention. I'm a bad host. But like your polyphony and your timbrality, can't, you can't morph between it. So when you choose a uh, pick a B, like number four, I'm guessing B that you pick is forced to have the settings, the unchanging settings that you can't change when you're doing edit A and edit B. I suspect that B, whatever patch you choose, is forced to have the settings that you already had on the patch you're actually in. So this does not sound like the lead sound that we chose, but it's still um, certainly adequate for the purpose of demonstration. Anyway, that is the Arturia Polybrutes Morph Control section.